Good. I'd like to welcome everyone to the April 17th, 2017 meeting of the Delaware County Board of Commissioners. If everyone would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'm, I'm Jeff Benton, President of the Board. To my left is Gary Merrill, our Vice President. To my right is fellow Commissioner Arb Lewis, our County Administrator for his and our Clerk is Jennifer Walraven. So let's go ahead and start. Resolution number 17-369 in the matter of approving the electronic record of proceedings from regular meeting held April 13, 2017. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-369. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. We do not have any public comment or elected official comment. That brings us to item number four, resolution number 17-370, in the matter of approving purchase orders and now certificates and payments of warrants in batch number CM APR 0414. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 17-370. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Resolution number 17-371, in the matter of approving travel expense requests. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 17-371. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-372, in the matter of a stock transfer request from Well Seasoned Kitchens, LLC, doing business as Yarbo's Tacos, Patio, and forwarding to the Ohio Division of Liquor Control with no objection and no request for a hearing. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on mission 17-372, Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-373, in the matter of approving the flat subdivision for Wedgwood Park North and Sunset Cove Estates, Reserve A, Division Number 1. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Rob Riley, Chief Deputy Engineer. Uh, the plats for these two subdivisions have been approved by all the necessary county agencies. Uh, Wedgwood Park North includes 14 single-family lots, and Sunset Cove is three uh, lots, and uh, we recommend approval at this time by your board. Okay. okay. I'll take a vote. Vote on motion 17-373. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Resolution number 17-374, in the matter of approving ditch maintenance petitions and ditch maintenance assessments for Wedgwood Park North, Brown Miller Woods Section 3, and Liberty Trace Section 3, Bays A. So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, this action would place the uh, portions of the drainage system uh, for each of these subdivisions on the county's drainage maintenance program. Uh, this follows our standard uh, development uh, expedited uh, uh, petition procedure. Uh, 14 lots for uh, Wedgwood Park North, 38 lots for Broadmiller Woods, and 17 lots for uh, Liberty, Liberty Trace. Okay. Vote. Vote on mission 17-374. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-375. In the matter of approving a cooperative project agreement between Delaware County and the City of Powell for improvements to the intersection of Liberty Road and Seldom Scene Road. Second. Discussion. We have worked with the City of Powell uh, on this agreement uh, to advance this project, uh, which will include uh, turn lanes and a new traffic signal at the intersection of Liberty Road and Seldom Seen Road. Uh, this is about a $1.3 million project, and we are proposing to split the cost 50-50 with the City of Powell. Uh, the corporation line basically runs right through the middle of the uh, intersection, so we think uh, that's appropriate for the situation. Uh, basically, this agreement calls out how we will uh, handle the project in terms of who will uh, administer uh, the phases and, and how uh, we'll, we'll go about uh, proceeding with the project. So, uh, in essence, we will be administering most of the project um, and then invoicing Powell for their share of the cost. Uh, it is our intention that uh, uh, Powell will submit for an OPWC uh, funding application uh, for the construction phase, and then we would split that uh, grant 50-50, and then uh, any remaining uh, share we would also split 50-50. So they would be the lead applicant uh, for the uh, 
for the grant, and then we would uh, administer basically the rest of the project. Are we stating the obvious panels on board with all of this? Absolutely. Okay. The split is the typical approach to this type of project? In, in this case, it makes sense because the core, basically the, the intersection is half in and half out of the, yeah. the, mm -hmm. the core plumbing. That's It's more unusual, isn't it, than not? Uh, we have a few of these around, but yeah, this is uh, a little bit of a unique situation uh, that uh, it just happens to be right down it's the middle. When it's split like like, mm -hmm. right, like it right. is, yeah. Yep. At an intersection, yeah. Okay. Vote. Vote on mission 17-375. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Ben? Aye. Resolution number 17-376 in the matter of approving a cooperation agreement between the City of Powell and Delaware County for the resurfacing of Sawmill Parkway. So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, another agreement with the City of Powell. This uh, this involves resurfacing of Sawmill Parkway from the Franklin County line up to uh, Seldom Scene Road. Um, about uh, roughly one third of that length is actually in the corporation limits of Powell. And so what we are proposing to do is, uh, as part of our uh, annual uh, road improvement program, to resurface that section. And uh, we would actually uh, administer the work and then invoice Powell for their portion, which uh, is estimated to be about $150,000 of the $499,000. Uh, I drive take. that area. I don't recall it being in that bad of shape. Is it just more routine maintenance, or is it? Uh... Yeah, this is actually a uh, what we call microsurfacing. It, it's a, a preventive maintenance treatment uh, designed to get about another six or seven years out of the life of the asphalt. So we're not actually milling out the old asphalt. We'll just put a seal. A seal coat over top, uh, replace the, the pavement markings, and um, hopefully extend the life of the asphalt so that we can get, uh, as I said, another six or seven years out of that asphalt before we have to go do a more expensive uh, treatment. Okay. All right. Vote. Vote on motion 17-376. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Aye. Mr. Ben? Aye. Resolution number 17-377, in the matter of approving a contract modification number one between the Delaware County Board of Commissioners and OHM Advisors for Dell CR 13, County Road 21, Worthington, Africa Road, Intersection Part 2. So moved. Second. Discussion. Jen, is this, this the... Uh, yeah, I think, think we did. Yeah. yeah, you had me confused. Yeah, I was looking at... I was just... I thought, yeah, why did you get pulled? I, I didn't know. I didn't find it either. We missed number 11. Oh. Suburban girls. Ah, suburban. Okay. She's just testing us. Yeah, she just... That's never seen happened. Seen if we were paying attention. We're going to handle this when you come back. Um, it doesn't matter what you're doing. She's already ready to make it. We'll just go ahead and do this yeah. one. We'll do okay, that yeah. 12. We'll come back to the yeah. Can you, yeah. Did we adjust your presentation? No problem. <laughs> no problem. All right. Um, so this, uh, uh, as you may uh, recall, this, is, uh, this project is located at the intersection of Worthington and Africa Road. Uh, what we're proposing to do is uh, upgrade and widen that intersection, uh, winding Worthing, Worthington Road all the way up to the uh, Highland Lakes uh, Avenue entrance. Uh, this modification with OHM will basically uh, take us all the way through final plans. Uh, it will uh, uh, do all the final engineering and environmental engineering uh, to get us through to fi the final design. Um, what we've gotten so far is basically a preliminary design. We have a rough... Uh, um, delineation of the, the, the construction limits and exactly what we'll be doing. This will actually take us through the final plan. So uh, we are proposing to uh, or recommending approval of this. Make sure we stay correct. Did we make a motion I second? Not, no, we didn't. Okay, then, then I'll make the motion. I'll second. And Rob will continue his discussion. And I can answer any questions you may have. This is uh, um, about yes. a $6.5 million project. Yeah, I didn't, that's a big I didn't one. Uh, add that part. Could you just review the timetable? Yeah, I was, I was curious as well. Yeah, the, uh, uh, this, this modification for design will take us all the way through uh, probably spring of next year uh, before we have the final plans. And so at that point, we'll, we'll start with the right-of-way acquisition. And our plan is to actually break ground in uh, probably later in 2019. And that project will go most likely through 2020 construction. Wow, OK. All right, vote. Vote on motion 17 377. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Beck? Aye. Now we're going to go back to item number 11 on page 
741. Resolution number 17-378. In the matter of approving a master utility construction and maintenance agreement with Suburban Natural Gas Company. So moved. Second. Discussion. This is an agreement that uh, uh, Eric Hostetler has worked on with the uh, Council for Suburban Natural Gas. Uh, we have a very similar agreement with Delco Water uh, Company. And basically what this agreement does is it <coughs> Excuse me. It addresses uh, situations where we are doing a road uh, widening project or a road construction project, and where, uh, in this case, suburban natural gas would have uh, an existing gas line and a private easement. Essentially, what this agreement allows is that uh, instead of us uh, uh, having to buy suburban <laughs> gas a, a new easement uh, when we need to relocate their line, we will allow them to relocate in the new right of way, but subject to compensation if we ever have to move them again. So uh, the advantages of this agreement is that it, it basically provides some predictability uh, both for us and the utility company uh, when we have an upcoming uh, project. There's no confusion over how we're going to handle it. And uh, ultimately, I think it saves us the expense of having to buy uh, either compensate the utility for their existing easement or buy them a new easement because we can allow them to relocate in the right of way. They're protected knowing that uh, if we ever have to move them again, uh, we have to pay them. But in most cases, we think that's a, a preferable arrangement than having to buy what we think would be probably pretty expensive utility easements. Okay. And Suburban's on board. Absolutely. All right. Vote. Vote on motion. 17-378. Mr. Merrill. All right. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Beck? Aye. Resolution number 17-379. In the matter of awarding the bids for asphalt materials to be used by the county engineer during 2017. So moved. Second. Discussion. We received bids for uh, various asphalt materials that our crews use throughout the year on, on road repairs, uh, including hot mix uh, asphalt as well as uh, liquid asphalts that we use for uh, uh, primarily chip seals. Uh, the uh, bid prices were actually identical to last year for the hot mix asphalt and uh, varied a little bit from uh, just under uh, 2016 to uh, about 17 percent over 2016 for the liquid asphalt. So. Um, some of that was expected. Uh, crude prices are higher than they were last year, so uh, wasn't terribly surprised to see that. But uh, uh, in general, this is a, a relatively small contract because uh, this is really for our in-house crews performing road repairs throughout the year. How much do we have a plan for this? Uh, My estimate is about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars will we'll, uh, procure through this contract. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17-379. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-380 in the matter of approving right away work permit summary sheet. So moved. Second. Discussion? My staff has uh, reviewed all of these uh, uh, work permits. Let's see. We had, uh, I think there was 11 of them. Um, yes, 11 permits, and uh, we are recommending approval. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17-380. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. You guys are going to be busy. Summer. <laughs> Resolution number 17-381 in the matter of approving the agreement and addendum number one to the document imaging project agreement between the Delaware County Board of Commissioners and Endicott Microfilm. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Chris Shaw, Record Center. Just requesting the approval of the contract and addendum with Endicott Microfilm. This is for four pieces of equipment at the Record Center, two scanners, the processor, and the digital archive writer. Um, how much are we talking about dollars-wise, Chris? 16405 Any... Um, any, uh, why are we doing this? I guess is kind of the basic question. Why are we doing this? Yeah, why are we? Well, the, the um, we need the contract for maintenance for the agreements. So these are. Um, the digital archive writer is down right now. Okay. And it's kind of affected our process. This will be week three. Um, so kind of if if the equipment's not running, then the whole process starts stops. So that's where we need it. Um, I've talked to Kodak. They think it's the belts. Um, so we just needed someone to come in and take a look. Okay. All right. Vote. 
Voted on motion 17-381. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Thank you. All right. Thank thanks, you, Chris. Chris. Okay. Resolution number 17-382 in the matter of approving a transfer of funds for job and family services. So, so second. Discussion? Good morning, Commissioners. David Dombrowski with Job and Family Services. The um, uh, transfer we're requesting, Ohio Advice or Administrative Code requires us to pay certain salary and administrative costs out of our public assistance fund. Um, and then this reimburses um, the public assistance fund from the Children's Services Fund and the Workforce Fund. So this is something we do quarterly, um, and so we're asking your approval. Okay. okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17-382. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 17-383. In the matter of the Delaware County Board of Commissioners accepting and approving the Prevention, Retention, and Contingency Program for the Department of Job and Family Services Public Assistance Program. And so moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning again. Uh, still me. Um, the Prevention, Retention, and Contingency uh, Program is a TANA-funded program. Um, and it passes the responsibility to the county to define their own programs. And so for years, Delaware County has had a PRC program. And right now we're amending the program in three ways. One, um, the um, percentage of poverty guidelines were updated by Health and Human Services in February, so we're catching up to the new guidelines. Um, number two, the county is underspending its TANF funding. Um, and in talking with our community partners, one of the things that um, is an unmet need is the payment of utility costs, especially through the winter months. So we're expanding the program to include utility assistance <laughs> payments with a lot of restrictions on it. So um, you have to be have a utility bill in your name. It has to be in disconnect status or about to be disconnected. You have to be enrolled in the percentage of income program um, and, and a series of others. So um, that's an expansion to the program. And then <clears throat> it used to be that we would require you, if you had over $250 in the bank, we would require you to use that money prior to us issuing the PRC, and we raise that limit to 500 So you can keep 500 in the bank. What we had found over time was that $250 for, for a lot of our folks, um, is, it doesn't allow them to plan very far in advance. So the $500 allows for a little bit more planning, um, and so we're asking your approval. Um, question regarding uh, community action mm -hmm. and uh, the utility uh, payments that they provide. How will this, how does, how does, how will that work then with what, what, uh, asking us to change today then, David? So one of the things that is required in this plan, the PRC payment is the payment of last resort. So anyone who applies for PRC is required to explore and use up to three community resources. So if somebody were to apply for our program, we're going to immediately refer them over to Community Action. Okay. If Community Action is unable to assist them, um, then we will help. Um, okay. And so in this case, then, you know, Community Action has a lot of requirements around the utility program, including being on the percentage of income program, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they have to utilize HEAP, which is the winter um, heating program. So all of those stay intact, and we'll just follow up behind for folks okay. who they can't help. Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you. So, so is this... Um, is this the funding for these addition, the, these increased uh, allocations or, or, or funding costs? Is it coming from TANF? It's all TANF money. It's 100% TANF funded. Okay. Okay. So there's no county general fund money no. subsidizing this. Yep. This is just you've had better experience than than uh, expected or historical, and so. You're, so you're, what's uh, happened historically is is the TANF caseloads have gone dramatically down. Um, and so um, the TANF caseload, for example, um, in 2013, we had approximately 605 folks per month on assistance, and now we're down to around 300. Mm -hmm. Of those 300, only 14 of them are adults. The remaining folks are children in the care of um, custodial relatives or legal guardians, that type of thing. So the TANF, or the TANF allocation from the state has remained relatively constant, even giving our decreased expenditures because of the decreased caseloads. Mm -hmm. So um, we're looking um, to kind of shift some costs around back to TANF, um, and one of the ways we do that is through PRC. Okay. Okay. So it's 100% federally funded. Okay. The, the Youth Employment Program? Yes. How is, how's that? 
So the youth, I know there were some changes that you had to make on There that. were some changes to the youth employment. So this year, for the first time, um, youth employment, or what you traditionally know as, as the summer employment program, uh -huh. Under the Comprehensive Case Management and Employment Program, which we shorthand to CCMEP, that became a year-round program. Um, and in addition, then this year, they added 14 and 15-year-olds, which um, is a struggle for us, honestly, because there are not many 14 or 15-year-olds looking for summer employment. And then we have a struggle with employers who are willing to take the risk of a 14 or 15-year-old in their workforce. And so we're ramping up now. The program starts um, officially in May. Uh, right now, we have an underwhelming amount of applications for the program, okay. um, which is not to be unexpected because we have competing programs um, going on in the county, um, and uh, again, the caseloads are down. So, uh, right now, to be honest, we have three applicants for the for the okay. program. Um, so, we're amping up our recruitment efforts to try and draw in more. But that starts. We're going to actually um, get the payroll provider. We release the bid, so we'll be bringing that to you shortly, okay. and then um, we'll get the program started after school lets out. So it'll probably okay. be June 1st. Okay. Could be a very positive thing for 14 and 15 year olds who sure. who can do this. Yeah, it's a little more than just work. We're hoping the employers will, will mentor these kids because uh -huh. the goal is to help teach them appropriate work behaviors. Um, hopefully we can align their interest with particular employers. Sure so that it's, it's, it leads to full-time employment later on down the line. So right, right. a lot of good things come out of that program. Yes, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17-383. Mr. Merrill? Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Ben? Aye. Resolution number 17-384 in the matter of authorizing the submittee of com comprehensive Title 20 social services plan for the Department of Job and Family Services. So moved. Second. Discussion. So the, the Title 20 money is Social Security Act Title 20, so this is all federal funds. Um, you guys might know it better as the Social Service Block Grant funding, um, SSBG funding. Um, the federal government passes SSBG money to the state with very little requirements for its expenditures. It has to be spent in social services in about 30 different categories. But it's up to the state to define then which of the 30 categories that money would be used in. The state, in turn, then passes that discretion down to the counties. Um, and so Delaware County has historically used two of the 30 categories for Title 20. One is for protective services for children, so it helps offset some of the costs associated with our children's services budget. Um, and then secondarily, we use it for information and referral, which helps fund the children's services hotline. Uh, this year, um, because we were interested in expanding adult protective services in the county, we've added a third category, um, which is adult protective services. So as you know, we get very little money in adult protective services every year. Um, the state allocates $50,000. That doesn't even cost, cover the cost of a salary, let alone services we need to put in place for seniors. So we're going to augment that by allocating Title 20 funds to the program. So Title 20 is all federal funding. Uh, Delaware County gets about $626,000 per year. And so this um, plan has to be submitted biannually to the state for the period which would begin October 1st of 2017 and run through September 30th of 2019 because it runs on this federal fiscal year. And then this plan also requires approval of our Family Services Planning Committee, which you've appointed. Um, they met on the 5th of April and approved the plan. So now we're submitting it to you for approval. Great. Okay. Good explanation. Questions? Uh, no. Okay. Vote. Vote on mission 17 384. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, David. Resolution number 17 385 in the matter of approving the services agreement between the Delaware County Board of Commissioners and Three Point Consulting LTD for, to perform consulting services for process improvement training. So moved. Second. Discussion? Bob Lamb, Economic Development Director. This is a request to be able to continue the lean training program that we initiated a year ago. So far, we've worked with Code Compliance, Sanitary Sewer, and several other organizations, including townships uh, such as Berkshire, Orange, and Liberty. Yeah. Well, as you know, I really favor this program. Yeah. 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 Lean Ohio or whatever. Yeah, Lean Sigma. Yeah. How, how has it gone so far in those organizations? Um, I think it's gone very well. We just completed the first in-house round of review with code compliance. They have another one, uh, half a day set up for May. Um, we are targeting mostly on development activities at this point uh, with the townships on their zoning policies and procedures and then with various countywide organizations, including the health district as well. 
How have the townships reacted to uh, this, the, this being available to them? We've gotten great feedback from the townships. Orange has set up their in-house day. Um, Berkshire is working on setting up their in-house day as well. Again, they're looking at how they can improve their zoning processes. As you know, we've had difficulty on the zoning side in the past, trying to move projects along quickly and efficiently. Is our hope that this will help address that issue. Okay. Great. Thanks yeah. for your work on yeah, this. Great. All right. Vote. Vote on Mission 17-385. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 17-386 in the matter of accepting sanitary sewer improvements for Glen Mead, Section 1, Phase A. So moved. Second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Mike Frommer, Sanitary Engineer. Uh, they've completed construction of the sanitary sewer improvements in Glen Mead, Section 1, Phase A, and we're asking that you accept those improvements because they've met all our requirements. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion. 17-386, Mr. Merrill. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Resolution number 17-387. In the matter of approving the sanitary subdividers agreement for Scioto Ridge Crossing Section 1. So moved. Second. Discussion. This is our standard uh, subdividers agreement for the first section of Scioto Ridge Crossing, and we're recommending approval as it's uh, presented. Okay. Vote. Vote on motion 17-387. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Resolution number 17-388 in the matter of approving a services agreement with Harris Industrial Services for pipe upgrades at the Tartan Fields Wastewater Treatment Plant. So moved. Second. Discussion. Yeah, this uh, uh, improvement here is to some immediate action items to address some of the hydraulic deficiencies at uh, the Tartan Fields Package Plan, as we kind of discussed during the work session um, a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Questions? Okay, vote. Food on motion 17 388. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Mark. That brings us to item number 23, an administrator reports. Good morning. Wow, that was pretty good. A long flight. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so on Friday, uh, Assistant Administrator Saikili and I spent um, some time with uh, our counterparts in Franklin County as one of the goals that you have given me is to uh, look at internal metrics and, and productivity <coughs> trends for their different offices and and, uh, and look at it from that perspective. So uh, they have a good system. They have what they call an office of management and budget. And we exchange a lot of ideas. They got some good ideas from us and we got some good ideas from them. A couple of things that stood out is um, every department has a strategic plan, which is presented at budget time. And it includes things like table of organization, and includes things like different programs that the department will be doing. And, and basically, what are you going to do with the money? It's as simple as that. What is the plan? And then the following year, uh, the budget is uh, compared to uh, the previous year's strategic plan. If some things need to be carried over, mm. then so be it. Uh, I kind of like that. Um, you know, I'll be discussing that with you a little bit more. And, and as, as part of the strategic plan, they also had trends, productivity trends, for every department. <clears throat> and easier to do for some areas, harder to do for some other areas, but it is being done for every area. Uh -huh. And, uh, um, you know, I think working, us working towards that would be good for our county. Mm -hmm. um, it may take a little bit of time. Uh, it will take some effort, but of, of course it will take cooperation from a lot of people. You'll cooperate, right? Sure. Yeah. See? <laughs> the success right there. <laughs> if you remember, we released an RFP question. Yes. That's uh, right. So yeah. David's actually a step you ahead. You already have your strategic plan. He's actually a step plan. ahead, so <laughs> yes. cooperate, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was he going to say? I put him on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. he will. Yeah. I know he will. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think as time passes, we will sit down and... Uh, you know, share some science. Uh -huh. I will sit down sure. ourselves first and, and get our thoughts together and, and come and present some ideas to you. And uh, maybe we can start some of that with the coming year's uh, budget presentations later on this year. I think it was a great idea for you to go yeah. there and <laughs> learn. That's best practices. And yeah, and, and, and I've been promoting 
metrics and monitoring and so yeah. on. Because again, we're a big organization uh -huh. that is continuing to grow. We got to make sure we grow efficiently. And this is kind of the genesis of you know, the, the, uh, that I, that effort. The, okay, they, they've they've done it. And again, it'll be a challenge in some areas, but I'm I'm 100% confident we'll be able to get productivity mm -hmm. measurements in every single area. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done it before many times, and it can be done. I've, I've, I've seen this in two or three different counties, talking to some of my counterparts, and uh, uh, I, I'm sure there are other counties too. But you know, I obviously I'm going to reach out to the people that I feel more comfortable with, mm -hmm. and uh, I've known my counterpart in Franklin for quite some time. And what I was encouraged uh, by by what they told me is that every department, uh, whether it's under the board of commissioners or not, has bought into the idea of creating mm -hmm. a strategic plan. Uh -huh. And then, uh, then, then, then presenting it that way as part of their budget. You know, this is what we want to do with our office, and uh -huh. this is how much we need. Makes a and lot then of come sense. Come back the following year and right. make a comparison with that. Right. Mm -hmm. Makes it very, makes it very open. Makes it very transparent. Right. And uh, you know, we, we are always looking at improving. And yes. uh, if we have a baseline, that helps us improve. Right. Right. And you, you mentioned in your email and conversation earlier about the process of, of uh, governing for the commissioners and yes. how they do it differently. Yes. I don't know if you wanted to get into any of that right now. Or it's, your, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it is. There very are some good ideas in there, I think. There are some good ideas. It is, it is a little bit different. Uh, in, um, in Stark and Green, I believe they do it the same way, too. Um, there is this. So today would be, as an example, today would be an explanation day and then Thursday would be the voting day. So today, whoever wants to have something on the agenda would come in and explain everything that they're mm -hmm. trying to do, give you a chance to ask questions, and then give you a chance to go back and reflect. Mm -hmm. You may have more questions. You may want more information. You may not want it on the agenda, but you have that option at that point. And, um, and uh, they, their, their process actually is six working days, six working days for, okay. for everything to go through. So one session during the week is a long session. That's where mm -hmm. everybody comes and explains. And then the second session is very short because you just come and vote on it. They tend to come back for the second session when the vote occurs, or they just come for the explanation session? That would be your call. If you think you have heard enough, if you think you have received all the information that you want, then they don't need to come back for the second session. My only observation, and I read that <laughs> over the weekend, and we spoke about it briefly this morning, uh, I've used the phrase we're transitioning from a rural to urban environment and how we do our county business. I just want us to be careful that we don't get so structured that we make it unwieldy for the other people. If it's obvious we're going to vote a certain way based on history or, uh, or whatever, I, I don't think you want those things to get dragged out. Sure. I think the things that you're, from my perspective, the things that are new to us, or have raised questions before, maybe that were some level of uncertainty, and that's a little bit subjective, but uh, uh, I'm not sure where that line is, but that's a line that I hope we could find the middle ground that sure. really works for the elected officials and for us to keep us better informed. So just an observation and comment. That's, that's, that's a very valid point. Yeah, I, I'm generally in support of more um, uh, discussion prior to the vote because what I find fairly regularly is that we're compressed. You know, we get the agenda, and the vote is literally the next day or two days, and somebody's gone or whatever, and you just don't have enough time to learn enough about the issue. So, so I think generally that that's a direction we ought to go, is to spread it out a little bit to, to give us. I, I think Jennifer and I and Sarah, we can work on that a little bit and yeah. maybe sure. yeah. get, sure. make sure that you guys have enough time to look at these issues and ask questions. Yeah. So anyway, interesting, yeah, like a meeting. very interesting good meeting. Yeah, great. Yeah. So, okay. Excellent. Is that it? Okay. I get to go first, huh? You do. I have two things. I know we've got a lot going on today. So uh, uh, the legislative meeting uh, that you both have been invited to is next, uh, the 26th. That's where we'll meet our legislators regarding the issues important to CCAO. I think it's at 5 o'clock. Uh, we need to reach out to make sure our elected officials are there. So if um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not going to sit here and assign, but if you'll let me know, maybe we, just, we each take one, 
Sure, and I, I've got that information. So, uh, a couple people haven't responded yet. Yeah, but so obviously our elected them. officials, uh, Rick, Andy, and Chris, right. need to be contacted. Right. So if we can, maybe just take one. So let me know who you're taking. I'll take okay. the third. Okay. And uh, the other thing that came up in a conference call last Friday, again, on these legislative issues, mm -hmm. is the F-5, I believe it's yeah. called, the lower-level felonies. There is a lot of concern about that. And the feeling in that conference call was we need to get the judges involved. Uh, they're the ones that are going to be kind of the front lines of that. So uh, um, we ought to talk about maybe how we convey or communicate that in that area. If you have any thoughts, maybe share with Frazan and. Well, actually, too, um, I chair that committee for CCAO, and so I sent information uh, to our judges to both okay, so these judges and then um, um, some of the other judges too. So, so they are aware of it. But will, uh, they, will they be reaching out to the legislators, or are they or are they kind of an ethical issue where they can or can't? I, I don't know how that works. Um, I don't know that they're reaching out to legislators. I haven't. I, I mean, heard it's that, they do that. But, um, do uh, but that there's an amendment on that. Um, on that F5 proposal, and we had a meeting on this uh, with with the committee, and there were many judges there from different Good. parts of the state. Well, the conference yeah. call that discusses all these issues last Friday, and that was kind of a sure. after the thought mentioned on that one. Sure, right. That's, you guys are involved. That's correct. I the judges, that. the judges are really good statewide on this. They they're aware of, of uh, the problem. Good. So. Yeah. I only have one other thing, and as everyone knows, yesterday was Easter, and uh, Saturday I attended a uh, uh, Easter egg hunt with my grandkids and my daughter at uh, Liberty High School, and I I just think sometimes we ought to give a shout out when a uh, a local entity. This happens to be a Grace Brethren Church. I do not go to that church, but I was very impressed with the way they handled it. helicopter dropped the eggs. There, I'm not good at I'm not good at counting. Jeez. It seemed like there was ten thousand people there. There may have been six thousand or seven thousand. There was a lot of kids. Yes. And all the groups waited their turn except the four and five year olds, which I think my grandson's age group. So they kind of <laughs> one went and they all waited their age group. It's like a, a herd of a, uh, and uh, but Grace Brother, I think I think it was the sixth year they did it. I happened to run into one of their pastors as they were leaving and. Thanked him for what he did. I think he said it was for six year. And uh, what good neighbors to, to go the extra mile to do something for their the kids in our uh, our county. And uh, so shout out to Bruce Brother Church in uh, of the Pal area. That's all I have. All right. Uh, oh, can I just add on to, um, to that when you mentioned Easter egg hunt? Um, Genoa Township has has an Easter egg hunt, and they've been doing it for several years. And uh, fifth, McNamara Park. Mac, well, yes, it's been at McNamara, and now it's it, it's always at McNamara now. But uh, fifteen thousand eggs. 100,000. And, oh, 100,000 for that, yeah. I mean, the numbers are pretty big, and of course, the parents are just kind of standing back. They have it all cordoned off, so, so, uh, with different age groups. So, uh, those bigger people can't jump in and take all the little kids' eggs <laughs> and turn it into a disaster. So, I mean, it's very carefully planned. I, you know, I've watched. I watched it for a few years. I mean, the planning on this is just amazing. But it is a wonderful. It, it's just wonderful. For and I wanted to make another kids. comment because of that. I, I not to exclude all the other great groups, organizations that had Easter egg hunts. It just be happy the one that I attended my first time. Extremely impressive. So really, we have a lot of great groups in our county. And uh, but. Uh, I just happy to one I was involved yes. in. So yeah. congrats to all of them. Involved, yeah. so. You can give your happy Easter. Yeah, happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a couple other things. Morpsey had the Morpsey meeting last Thursday. Um, usual agenda. The main topic that we got into in some detail was the state budget, which is obviously undergoing finalization right now. Uh, a lot of big issues affecting counties, the Medicaid uh, care, managed care organizations, Medicaid Medicare organization, sales tax loss, and how that's going to be handled is a big uh, issue. The local government fund was brought up. Uh, they're trying to introduce legislation to 
to move the soil and water conservation district to 50-50 funding, 50 percent state, 50 percent local. Mm -hmm. Not sure um, wh where exactly we stand on that continuum, but um, then we, I did go to the Access Sally. I got to mention this. We did go to the Access Sally lecture last Thursday. It was packed. Uh -huh. um, Access Sally was an Ohio Wesleyan student in the from 1918 to 1922. She did not graduate. Then she got uh, she was a couple degree couple credit hours short and left. Went, moved to Cleveland, moved around, ended up in Germany, spoke fluent German, and became the propagandist for the the Nazis in the 40s. And she was arrested in 46 after the war and put in prison from 49 to 61. And then worked at a convent in uh, Columbus for 12 years, and then made the call to Ohio Wesleyan because she finished her degree at Otterbein, oh. and then got the made the call to Ohio Wesleyan to become to get her degree because she qualified. And they were all kind of looking at each other like, "Oh boy, what do we do now?" <laughs> got this, <laughs> really? got this oh controversial person, and, and uh, she wants to get a degree, and she wanted to walk on the graduation ceremony. Ooh. So they decided to go ahead and do it, and the media did not catch it. The media did not realize who she was until the next day, and then the media found out and everything. So but anyway, she got her degree from Ohio Wesley in 1973. 73, okay. And, uh, passed away in 1988, lived a okay. quiet life. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, anyway, a fascinating story. Um, Records Commission is Wednesday. We've got the Legends Luncheon Wednesday as well for the memorial. That's always in interesting, especially mm -hmm. for all fans. It is. <laughs> um, since there are a lot of us here. Um, and then the Morpsey State, State of the Region lunch Thursday. So we got a lot going on. Thursday. We, right. we do have yeah, one, reason. one topic for executive session. We lost session. one topic. We're down to one. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> <laughs> Resolution number 17-389, in the matter of adjourning into executive session for consideration of collective bargaining. So moved. Thank you. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 17-389. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Yeah, I apologize, but unfortunately we're, we're going into executive session for a few minutes. We won't be long, but everybody can take a little break and we'll be, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Yeah, you're welcome to stay in the room. Yeah, yeah.